So I'd first like to thank the ITU and the UN for inviting me out to speak today. Um, I only have a few slides. I uh, have a very interesting background, which they tell me. I don't know if that's true or not. But I uh, started a couple of companies. I started a company that did mobile uh, applications and infrastructure. I sold it to Accenture in August of 2015. And I started a financial services startup in March of 2015 that was just acquired by Goldman Sachs in March of this year. And so with that kind of lens as a context, um, I started the new company because I wanted to do some good in the world. And so my thought today is around innovation and specifically around, I don't think it should be so innovative to be socially responsible. I think that's just something we should all do in all of our products and all of our services. And so with that, I thought I would talk about what stops innovation within large organizations, within companies, within individuals, and maybe that would be something everyone could take with them today. So the first thing that I want to talk about is I want to talk about fear. Fear happens at an organizational level. It's an individual emotion, but we experience fear as a unit. We experience it as one organism when we're in a large company, a large organization. Fear paralyzes organizations so that they are unable to move forward with the goals that they set. We see every, all of you have experience in this. All of you have seen an organization set some very nice goal, and every year you check the metrics on that goal, but you never quite reach that goal. And the reason organizations have fear when it comes to innovation is because organizations are object to change in the long run. When you're a corporation, then you start becoming myopic. You start focusing on very short-term, very small goals. And this prevents you from seeing far enough in the future to see the ramifications or the outcomes of not making more gentle changes along a longer course. So fear is an organizational thing, but uncertainty is a project level thing. Uncertainty is not about the organization or the individual. Uncertainty is about will what we're doing, the initiative, the product, the project, the program, work in the long run? Will people accept it? Uncertainty can feed into the fear of an organization. Because what happens is, when you're uncertain at the level, at the product level, then the organization can sense that uncertainty, and it makes them make very different changes to the program. So what do they try to do? They try to mitigate the risk of this program. When they try to mitigate the risk, they inevitably create more risk. It's inevitable. Uh, risk is the thing we should all be a lot more comfortable with that we're not. Risk for me, in my world, is every day. Everything is a risk. Every product I launch, every company I start, all of it is risk. And it doesn't matter, because that's my world. But when you get outside of my world, you find that being socially responsible can be seen as risky by some corporations, by some leaders. That's ridiculous. Why would you not want to do what's right? Okay, so why does that happen? And that happens on an individual level because of doubt. So fear is at the organizational level, uncertainty is at the product or program level, and doubt is at a personal level. Each one of us doubts ourselves at some point. The difference between entrepreneurs and serial entrepreneurs and everyone else is that they ignore that doubt. They don't listen to themselves, sometimes to their detriment, right? <laughs> plenty, plenty of startups fail far more than are successful. But when you doubt yourself, then you're unable to take any action. It is paralyzing. Because when you doubt yourself, you're less likely to share the idea with your co-collaborators, with your partners, with your peers. It's less likely to make it through the organization. And so fear, uncertainty, and doubt are very big killers of innovation in every organization, in every way. But the two things that can help drive it most that are often not available are funding and opportunity. I want to talk about funding for a moment. You do not need funding to be innovative. That is ridiculous. You do not have to have a budget or a committee or a council to do something that is innovative. Each and every one of you has something you've used every day, something within the organization, within even the ITU, that you know should be changed, that you talk to your peers and they know should be changed. So change it. You don't need a budget, you don't even need permission. An organization should cherish the people who take the risk and make the changes that make the organization better. 
period. So funding is this thing that when I talk to other entrepreneurs, they say, I have to have funding. I have this great social enterprise I want to do, and I need funding so I can get it. That's not how entrepreneurship works. Entrepreneurship is very, very hard. You lose your paycheck, maybe your home, your wife, your car. It's very, very difficult to start a company. And usually you don't have funding, and you work nights and weekends at your current job. And then when you've got enough going, you take a big risk, a leap of faith, if you will, and you jump out of your current job into something where you have no safety net, whether it is not safe at all. And so when we get stuck on the funding, then we don't innovate. We let that be a blocker. Well, I'd love to do this idea, but I don't have anybody who's going to give me the money. I don't have millions of dollars in investment. You don't need that. You don't need hundreds of thousands of dollars in investment. You don't need tens of dollars in investment. If you're a software entrepreneur, Apple will fund your company right now if you go to an Apple store anywhere in the world because they will give you the laptop for X amount a month, right? It's very easy to get started in software. In hardware, it's even easier. There's organizations like Foundry that will help you find all of the places to get prototypes. Some of them will do that for free if you're an entrepreneur, if you're in an emerging country, if you're having an idea that has a social cause to it, uh, there's plenty of resources available today, right? So don't let funding be the thing that stops any of the projects or any of the people that you work with or that we're all trying to work with. So the last thing I'll talk about is opportunity. This is the biggest problem. We, as organizations, as individuals, as leaders, don't create enough opportunity. And we never will. As much as you could say we've created, it's still not enough. Because at the point where it's enough, then the world will be a very different place. And creating opportunity is key, and the lack of opportunity kills innovation yet again. The opportunity to be heard is the number one thing I would suggest, just for people to listen to the ideas of people who may not have any experience whatsoever in the field that they're talking about. They may have not started a business. They may have zero entrepreneurial skills that you know of, that you can obsess. These are the people that will change the world. They go from one industry to another. I mean, look, I have no reason to be in the finance industry. I have no finance experience. I'm now part of a company at one year that is changing the financial world. We're addressing the savings crisis, not just in the US, but soon globally. In the US, $400, that's the number. If a person doesn't have $400 in their savings and they get a flat tire, a car repair, whatever, they could be bankrupt. That should scare everyone in the room. And globally, there's dozens, hundreds of other examples. So I wanted to go into finance because it was my social responsibility to go and use what I know about innovation and technology to change that. When I first went out, nobody wanted to participate. Nobody wanted to give me any money. They're like, oh yeah, you're great, you do tech, you have all this background, but you don't know anything about finance. Why do I need to know anything about finance? When we learn too much of a topic, we become, it, it's embedded in our heads, in our, in our hearts. We're unwilling to change and we don't know how to change because that's the way it's always been done. I wanted to jump from one industry into something I knew nothing about because that's an opportunity. That's an advantage as an entrepreneur because I don't care about the rules. I don't care about the regulations, they're not difficult to deal with. I take the regulations just as more requirements in the software that I'm designing. Who cares? The governments can write as many regulations as they want. I just adapt them. It makes no difference. So the fear and the uncertainty and the doubt affect the company and the product and the people. The funding is not the issue we would have it be, and the opportunity is the greatest thing. So I would like to challenge everyone before I stop to find a way in the next week to create an opportunity for someone you work with, one of your peers, to be able to innovate something in your organization, in a product, in a company you know, even something you're unrelated to. That would make a tremendous change in the world. Thank you very much.